China, a great country with over 5,000 years of uninterrupted civilization, has countless achievements in its history and endured many hardships. To this day, modern China radiates a new and impressive energy. Let us decipher through culture the answers to the magical codes that lie behind this powerful vitality. Welcome to this episode of Chinese Practice with Chinese Wisdom. Today we are going to explore the cultural code of promoting harmony between humanity and nature. What kind of spiritual trait is it in Chinese culture? How does it influence China and the world? With these questions in mind, we have invited British expert in Chinese culture, Jonathan Shoes, and a student from the United Republic of Tanzania, Xiao Le, to discuss with us. Jonathan and Xiao Le, welcome to our studio. Jonathan, welcome. Please take a seat. Xiao Le, welcome. Thank take you. A seat. In another studio, we have also invited other three guests. <laughs> they are Professor Hao Li Xin, Professor Wen Hai Ming, and Benjamin Coase from the United Kingdom. All of them have a deep understanding of Chinese history and culture. Over 100 young people from home and abroad are also present as our audience. Welcome to today's discussion. Before we start today's discussion, let's watch a short video. I'm very impressed by the way in which the Chinese people are really trying to follow the path of ecological civilization and to find a, a harmony between man and nature. I hear this all the time during my time in China, and I, I fully agree that humans and nature have to live in harmony with each other. Just looking around at this, it's um, beautifully set out. Because it, they require like, constant maintenance and this attention to detail. In the short video, many people mentioned that Chinese people pay lots of attention to the harmonious coexistence between man and nature, which reflects the wisdom of promoting harmony between humanity and nature. Let's see how we write this old saying in Chinese. Let's invite our old friend Uncle Hans to analyze the Chinese characters. My name is Richard Sears. The character Ren in the phrase Tian Ren Huo Yi, it is written like this today. Its seal form is written like this. Its oracle form is written like this. Let's take a look at Tian. Its simplified character form is written like this. Its seal character form is written like this. Its oracle form is written like this. As we can see, its lower portion refers to a man standing facing forward. The upper portion is a circle that looks like a man's head and stands for the sky above the head. Therefore, this character refers to the sky, and the sky stands for nature in this context. We can know from this ancient writing that man and nature are inseparable. The character Tian embodies a concept of promoting harmony between humanity and nature. Thank you. I think Chinese character is so interesting. You know, through these two characters, I can feel the meticulous observation and uh, the rich imagination of the ancient Chinese. I knew that characters in Chinese develop from pictograms that actually represent things that you can see, but seeing how they're put together really helps you understand the concepts that underlie the language and therefore the culture. This example, heaven being a mix of man and sky, just shows how the human is seen in Chinese culture as part of the universe and not separate from it. 
Do you know the origin of the saying? The phrase promoting harmony between humanity and nature, that was formulated in those terms by a Confucian scholar called Zhang Zai. As far as I know, this goes back to the I Ching over 3,000 years ago. That's the Book of Changes, this one here, the classic. It sees everything it's in a state of permanent change. That's just the way the universe is. That's how nature works. And it's something that we humans are subject to as well. We have to follow nature's laws. May I said, let's go back more than 2,000 years to the Qing Dynasty in China and see what was happening there. Tuila,所有人注意了。禁令解除只要你放走小鱼即可让自然休养生息可就来不及了 The statutes on agriculture of the Qing dynasty were created more than 2,000 years ago. It has been recognized by experts as China's earliest law on environmental protection. What do you think of this ancient Chinese law, Xiaole? I'm a bit surprised. As far as I know, the earliest environmental protection in Europe was ordinance issued by England to prohibit the use of open coral fired stoves in London. But it's really surprising that Chinese people more than 2,000 years ago not only realized that human beings should live in harmony with nature, but also they had a specific and detailed law on environmental protection. You're right, it, it's really surprising that uh Environmental protection was so advanced all that time ago, especially when you think there were far fewer people around at that time, and they didn't have the heavy industry and pollution that we have today. But even 4,000 years ago, there was an agency called, I think, U. They had the job of looking after the environment, and other laws were made to protect from over-aggressive farming practices. Exactly. And the concept of promoting harmony between humanity and nature has a long history in China. What kind of profound meanings does it carry? Let's hear the understanding of our experts. I would like to share with you three quotes from three sages. The first one is from The Equality of Things of Zhuangzi. Heaven and earth are with me, and all things are one with me. The second one is from Dao De Jing, created by Lao Zi. Man follows the law of the earth. Earth follows the law of heaven. Heaven follows the law of the Tao. And Tao follows the law of nature. Last one is from Chuan Xi Lu, written by Wang Yangming. 
The saint has worries, so he spreads the benevolence of the unity of everything to cultivate all. The three aspects of the concept of promoting harmony between humanity and nature. The first one emphasizes the oneness of man and nature and the organic connection of the whole world. The second suggests that human beings should act in accordance with the laws of nature and show respect for nature to ensure development of humans in harmony with nature. The third one indicates that we should extend the benevolence among human beings to the benevolence and care that human beings should have for nature. The Chinese ideal of promoting harmony between humanity and nature has always placed man in the midst of nature, emphasizing an ideal state of harmony and unity between humanity and nature. In an agricultural society that depends on nature for food, this concept was constantly reinforced, shaping the traditional Chinese view of the universe and influencing all aspects of agriculture, economy, politics and culture. In contemporary society, this concept can not only be beneficial to China, but also to the world as a whole. Promoting harmony between humanity and nature is an ancient ecological view formed by Chinese people on the basis of their agricultural civilization. After the founding of New China, the harmonious coexistence between man and nature has been a major proposition that Chinese people have been striving for relentlessly. In the north of China, there is a place called Sai Hanba. In 2017, its constructors received the Champions of the Earth Award on the stage of the United Nations. Let's find out the story. This is one of the high places of the Sai Han Ba National Forest Park, and behind me is an empty sea of forest which is particularly spectacular. Sai Han Ba, located in the north of Hebei, means beautiful high mountain. The scenery here varies throughout the year. However, the beauty does not come easily. Today, we will explore the history of Sai Han Ba to understand its past and present. Hello, is this the Sai Han Ba Exhibition Hall? Yes, this is a painting named The Hunting in Fall at Mulan Paddock. Sai Hanba used it to be rich in water, grass, and trees. In the 20th year of the Kangxi period, the Mulan Paddock was established here. As the treasury was badly depleted by the end of the Qing Dynasty, Mulan Paddock was greatly expanded into the surrounding forest, and all the vegetation was destroyed, and the area basically became a vast wasteland. In the early 1960s, China decided to establish a large-scale state-owned forest farm in Sai Hanba and to prevent the sandstorms. At that time, a team of 369 people from all over the country came to Sai Hanba and pioneered the arduous path of the reforestation. Three generations of Chinese people took more than 60 years to restore the lucid waters and lush mountains of the beautiful high mountain, even better than it was before. Before the establishment of the farm, the forest only covered 11.4% of the land. Now the total area of our forest is 93.3 thousand hectares, and 82% of the land area is covered with trees. Over the past 60 years, Sai Hanba people have created and protected not only an area of forest, but also a beautiful picture of man in harmony with nature. One of the things that, that's really noticeable over the 20 years I've been coming to China is that there are many more green spaces than there used to be, even in the bigger cities like Shanghai. But this is also being achieved at a larger level. I think China is responsible for one quarter of the world's new green areas that have been put in place over the last 20 years or so. And particularly as it replaces vanished forests and plants new, whole new ones. Inspired by China, the African Union launched the Great Green Wall uh, in program in 2007 with the goal of building an 8,000 kilometer long and ecological protection uh, forest belt in the southern edge of Sahara Desert. More than 11 nations have taken part on this program. China has provided uh, technical and uh, professional support on this program. China not only following the idea of promoting harmony between uh, humanity and nature, 
by itself, but also helping other countries to improve the environment and also sharing the valuable Chinese wisdom to the rest of the world. Exactly. We've been striving on the path of green development. Next, let's head for Zhejiang to learn about the story of a beautiful village. I am now in Yuchun village, Anji County, Zhejiang province. Many people come to enjoy the green and taste the freshness of the mountain. Here you are. You can finally have a rest now. Have some tea, please. I'm just a free now. Are you busy every day like this? Yes, almost every day. You run this homestay. It was not your initial career planning, right? Yes, because I used it to be a tractor driver in the mine to load ore. After 2003, with the closure of the mine in Yuchun village, we were actually laid off and unemployed. I responded to the call of our village and came back to start the homestay. In the beginning, the number of tourists we received in a year was only a few thousand. But now we basically receive 50,000 to 60,000 dining and lodging tourists a year. Nowadays, many people come here to see the environment, to appreciate the landscape, and to experience the local customs. How did the transformation of Yuchun village come about? Pan Chunling suggests finding the answer in the mine, the place where he used to work. Secretary Yu, when I was walking here, I heard that it used to be a mine, right? The location where we are is one of our largest limestone mining areas. In the 1970s and 1980s, our Yuzun village started to work on mining, burning lime, and making cement. Although mining in the mountains brought in significant revenue, it has also caused extensive environmental damage. In 2001, after NG County put forward the proposition of developing itself to be an eco-county, we began to gradually shut down the mines and cement factories. Many local residents were worried about their future, questioning what are we going to do after the mines closed? Where is the way out of Yuzun village? We were quite uncertain about the future. The turning point came on August 15, 2005, when Xi Jinping, then the secretary of the provincial party committee, surveyed Yuzun village. When he heard that we had shut down the mines, he sang high praise for us, and then he blurted out, Lucid waters and lush mountains are invaluable assets. These words shed light on the way forward for Yuzuan village. We began to gradually change the way of development. Look, there is the center of our Yuzuan village. Yuzuan village right now is not as dusty as it used to be. Tourists come here all year round. We used to sell stones, but now we've transformed into selling landscapes, truly turning lucid water and lush mountains into invaluable assets. Villagers who used it to work in the mine have now opened homestays, coffee bars, and even rafting businesses. All kinds of industries have mushroomed here. People have accumulated wealth thanks to our good ecological environment. In 2022, our village collective income reached 13.05 million RMB and the per capita income of villagers also exceeded 64,000 RMB. That is to say, Yuzun village has become a beautiful mountain village with a strong economy, rich people, beautiful landscape, and a harmonious community. Lucid waters and lush mountains are invaluable assets. The green development concept has spread from a small mountain village to all of the country. The Chinese wisdom of promoting harmony between humanity and nature, together with China's solutions, have gained the attention of the whole world. So any comment from you, Xiaole? I believe the meaning of this, of this statement is that economic development and uh, environmental protection are not contradictory, but they can coexist together. I resonate with this statement. Everyone is familiar with mushrooms. In the past, uh, growing mushrooms required deforestation and uh, was harmful to the environment and also was costful. But China, Chinsao technology, helped to solve this global challenge. 
And uh, the Chinese expert later on brought this technology to Africa. The technology not only helped the farmers to address food and the poverty problem, but also helped to reduce soil erosion and improve the environment, and also was referred to a gas of happiness. The idea that the environment is really, really valuable is actually now being embedded into the way China is developing, as you mentioned. Uh, promoting harmony between humanity and nature, the old idea, proposes an ideal state of balance between humans and nature. In a modern context, that means that protecting the environment actually goes beyond science, and it really goes into the whole idea of culture. Next, let us meet a Chinese lady who attended the 15th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity as a youth representative. Her story of protecting wildlife has touched the world, and she is affectionately known as the Princess Beaver. Would you be willing to do something small if it could save a lot of little fresh lives like this? I am Chu Wenwen, responsible for the Nature Conservation Association of Altai. We mainly do work related to wildlife protection and wildlife rescue. The Sino-Mongolian beaver is a national first-class protected animal and is only found in the Wulungbu River Basin in Altai region of Xinjiang, China. The beaver is a very intelligent species, as they build dams that become small habitats for other wild species. We have found a lot of evidence of beaver eating in this area. By planting trees here, we aim to supplement their diet. We have launched a series of charitable activities related to beaver conservation. For instance, the Beaver Canteen Program. We mobilize local herders and forest rangers to plant trees with us. With the government support, we have planted 620,000 willow shrubs for the beavers, providing a lot of valuable habitats for them. When our association was first established in 2018, the population of Sino-Mongolian beavers was estimated at around 162 families, approximately 500 individuals in total. We conducted another beaver survey two days ago and found that the population had risen to 199 families consisting of over 600 individuals. Chu Wenwei is backed up by Chinese governments at all levels and millions of netizens. Nowadays, the idea of living in harmony with nature has become a consensus and expectation in society. Do either of you have any related personal experience? Well, I would like you to introduce to a creature. This is Yangtze finless porpoise, an ancient creature that lives in China's Yangtze liver, is also known as a smiling angel. At one time, due to frequent human activities and environmental degradation, the number of porpoises declined rapidly and they were almost extinct. And over the years, China has introduced uh, many environmental protection policies to restore the Yangtze liver uh, ecological environment. And now people are surprised to find that they often encounter porpoises when walking along the river. Uh, that indicating that the smiling angel have already turned back. China is actually one of the very few mega diverse nations, as it's described. So it bears a huge responsibility to all that wildlife that it contains. There's a growing system of national parks and protected areas to look after these endangered species and their environments. And there are many people who act as rangers and wardens and so on who are dedicated to protecting the environment and these species. It's often actually the local people who live next to them who do this job. Building a green home is a common dream of humankind and protecting the environment entails the joint efforts of all countries in the world. In this regard, China has made a solemn commitment to the world. In December 2015, the Paris Agreement was officially signed at the UN Climate Change Conference, launching a global carbon neutrality program. However, the global compliance with the Paris Agreement has not been consistent with one country even withdrawing from it for a time, which presents a significant challenge to global environmental governance. On September 22, 2020, 
China proposed that it will scale up its intended and nationally determined contributions by adopting more vigorous policies and measures, strive to have the emission peak of carbon dioxide before 2030, and achieve carbon neutrality before 2060. What does China's carbon neutrality commitment imply? Let's hear the understanding of our experts. China's commitment means that it will complete the most dramatic reduction in carbon emission intensity and realize carbon neutrality from carbon peaking in the shortest time in global history. This fully demonstrates China's sense of responsibility as a major country. Green and low carbon transformation is a tricky issue even for developed Western countries. But for developing countries, it requires much more thoughtful consideration. China aims to coordinate ecological protection with economic and social development. And this approach and experience can bring reference and inspiration to the world. China firmly believes in and practices the concept that lucid waters and lush mountains are invaluable assets and plans for development from the perspective of harmonious coexistence between humans and nature. This reflects China's ancient wisdom of promoting harmony between humanity and nature, and is also more in line with the common interests of all mankind. In reducing carbon emission, China uh, has given full play to the uh, role of science and technology innovation. For example, the use of renewable energy, boosting new energy uh, automobile industries and so on. At the same time, China is also helping other developing countries to, uh, uh, to solve their energy problem. For example, we have uh, the largest photovoltaic power plant in East Africa that was built by Chinese enterprises and has been uh, providing a stable and a clean energy to the local residents, uh, laying down the foundation for green living and uh, production there. China is clearly a leader in many green technologies, uh, which serves its own interests as well as those of the world, of course. But it's unavoidable. When a country is as big as China, it's going to have to play its part in c combating climate change. We, the rest of the world, we need China to play an active role here. And luckily for us, <laughs> it seems that that's what it's doing. Thank you, Jonathan. Ecological prosperity leads to cultural prosperity. The natural environment is a foundation on which human civilization thrives. President Xi Jinping has pointed out that we must work together to promote harmonious coexistence between man and nature, build a community of all life on the earth, and create a clean and beautiful world for us all. The concept of community of all life is inheritor of the ancient wisdom of promoting harmony between humanity and nature. It contributes Chinese wisdom and solutions to the sustainable development and progress of human civilization. I would like to invite both of you to affix the engraved seal to end today's program. Thank you for watching Chinese Practice with Chinese Wisdom. See you next time and bye for now. Yangjonghua五千年一脉相承事无双，三环五帝文明史，诗书礼乐远流长，天下为公行大道，求所千载谋大同，名为邦本世人正，本故邦名社稷文，为正以德如北辰，正己修身，众心拱，革故鼎新